In this video, we're going to see how to crop photos into shapes using Photoshop Elements. Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 14 for this video, but this will work with other versions as well. Let's say that we want to give the photo of this little dog a more interesting edge. Let's start by duplicating the background layer. A quick way to do that is to press Command-J on a Mac or Control-J on a PC. I'll press Command-J, and now I have an exact duplicate of the background layer, and it's named Layer 1 by default. Next, let's go to the Toolbox and go to the Modify section. The tool in the upper left space of that section is the Crop Tool but it shares that space with another tool called the cookie cutter tool which is the tool we're going to use. To get to the cookie cutter tool we need to first click on the crop tool in the toolbox to make it active. And now we can go down to the tool options and make the cookie cutter tool active by clicking on it from down there. Also in the tool options you'll see a preview thumbnail of a shape. Mine shows a heart shape, but you might see some other shape down there. Click once on that thumbnail and the Shapes Preview box pops up. At the top of the Preview box is a field called Shapes. Mine says Default. I'll click on the word Default and a list of different groups of shapes appears. Let's choose the set that's named Crop Shapes by clicking on it. Now we see a thumbnail of all the different shapes in this set. There's more to see, which we can do by clicking and dragging on the scroll bar on the right side of the window. When you see a shape that you want to use, just double click on its thumbnail to close the box and make that shape active. I'll double click on this one to make it active. To use the shape, you click and drag it over your photo. You'll have an opportunity to adjust it so you don't have to draw it exactly how you want it to be. I'll start in the upper left of the photo and then press and hold and drag with my mouse diagonally down and to the right. When I release the mouse button, you can see the outline of the shape over the photo. Notice there's also a bounding box around the shape and a green check mark and red no symbol. That bounding box is how we can adjust the shape before we apply it as the crop. To adjust the size of any of the four sides of the shape, you can place your mouse over the line of the bounding box for the side that you want to adjust. You can see that the top line of the bounding box doesn't quite include our dog's ears completely. So we could move our cursor towards the top of the bounding box and then once we see our cursor change to that double-headed arrow pointing up or down, that indicates that we can adjust that line if we press, hold, and drag the mouse in the direction that we want to move it. Let's click and drag up until we see his ears are included in the shape. So now they're included. So now I'm going to let go of the mouse button and the top of the shape will stay there. We can adjust any of the four sides in the same way. We can also put our cursor over any of the four corners of the bounding box and when the cursor changes to a diagonal double-headed arrow, we can press, hold, and drag to adjust the two adjacent sides at the same time. Once the shape is positioned on the photo the way you want, click the green check mark to make the bounding box go away and accept the change. Look over in the Layers panel and you can see our change has been applied to Layer 1. That gray and white checkerboard pattern on Layer 1 is Photoshop Elements way of showing transparent areas. We can't see our change in the active image area, that's because we see the background layer showing through those transparent areas of layer 1. Let's hide the visibility of the background layer by clicking on its eye in the Layers panel. Now we just see the contents of layer 1 in the active image area. If you want to try another crop to compare it to your first one, it's pretty quick to do that on a new copy of the background layer. 
First, click on the background layer to make it active. Then press Command-J on a Mac or Control-J on a PC to duplicate the background layer. Now you can try a different crop on this new duplicate layer. We'll hide the visibility of the layer with our first crop by clicking on its eye. Then we'll show the visibility of our new layer by clicking on its eye. Those eyes on each layer act like an off-on switch when you click on them. So make sure that the cookie cutter tool is still active in the toolbox and then just draw out a new crop over your photo. This time, since we have the visibility of the background layer hidden, we can see the results more clearly. But notice we have the bounding box around it, which means that we can adjust it as much as we want until we click the green check mark. There's a couple other common adjustments that you can make before you click on the green check mark that I didn't show you earlier. One is that you can place your cursor inside the bounding box and then hold and drag with your mouse to move your shape to a different area of your photo. So you're not changing the size of your shape, you're changing its position in your photo. The other adjustment we haven't discussed yet is the ability to use the bounding box to rotate the shape. To do that, you place your cursor outside of the shape, and once your cursor changes into a double-headed curved arrow, you can press, hold, and drag your mouse up or down to rotate the shape. The photo itself doesn't rotate, just the shape does. If we have the cookie cutter tool active and go to the tool options, and click our shape preview. So I'll click on the cookie cutter tool and then click on this preview again. Remember earlier we chose the set of shapes called um, crop shapes. Well, we aren't limited to only using that set of shapes. In fact, if you click in the field to see the list of shape sets, you can choose any of these sets. And if you want to see every shape from every set, choose the option at the top of the list which is called All Elements Shapes. Now you can use that scroll bar to see all of the shapes that you can use. Just realize that as you look at the shape thumbnails, only the black area of the shapes will show your photo. For example, you might see these frames and think your photo would look good in one of them. So let's give that a quick try. I'll turn off the visibility of our last layer, click on the background layer to make it active, and then press Command or Control J to duplicate the background layer again. And then I'll click on its eye so we can see it in the active image area. And now, let's choose one of those frames. So I'll choose this one by double-clicking on it. Now go over your image and click and drag out the shape. Something like that. Now let go. Look what happens when I let go of the mouse button. It doesn't work so well for our purpose. So it's important to remember when choosing a shape that your photo will only show in the black areas of the shape. I'm going to undo this or click the No button. I'm going to actually throw away this last layer and then I'll turn the visibility on for this layer. Let's say that we're happy with this uh, crop right here, or this shape crop. So to save this image, like you see it in the active image area, you need to keep the visibility of the background turned off the way that it is now. So the red diagonal line going through the eye next to the background layer, that means its visibility is turned off. And I also have the visibility of that first uh, crop that we tried turned off. Now if I go up to the File menu and choose Save As by clicking on it,
we get the Save As dialog box. The Format field has defaulted to Photoshop format and has put a .psd at the end of the original name of the file. The reason it went to Photoshop format is because we have more than one layer in the file. But we can change the format to JPEG, which is a common format. So we'll click on that and then click on JPEG to choose that. And now you can see that the name of the file has changed from .psd to .jpg. Also, the box labeled Layers is grayed out and has a yellow warning symbol next to it. That's alerting us to the fact that JPEG format doesn't support layers. So any layers that you don't see in the active image area will be thrown out of the file if you save it like this. That's fine in this case because we don't need the background layer. Notice that in addition to adding .jpg to the end of the file name, it also added the word copy. By adding the word copy, the name of our photo is not exactly the same as our original photo. That means our original photo will just be closed without any of the changes that we made and we'll get this new photo that does have our changes. One other thing to know about JPEG format is that it not only doesn't support layers, it also doesn't support transparency. That means if we click Save right now, the gray and white checkerboard pattern, which represents transparency, will be replaced with white. If you want the transparency to remain in the saved photo, you'll need to choose either Let's look at these formats. You'll need to either choose CompuServe GIF or PNG. But for this example, I'm just going to choose JPEG anyway. And now I'll click the Save button. Notice that the transparency has been replaced with white, and in the Layers panel, the background layer is gone and we just see our one layer. And also another dialog box appears that shows some options for JPEG. I'm not going to go through all of these in this video, but I'm going to leave everything the way it, it's set in this box and just click OK. So now we have our original image showing and it has the changes we made, but remember we just saved a copy of that file with the changes and flattened and everything as a JPEG, and that's on our desktop wherever, or wherever on our computer we saved it to. So now I can just close this photo and I'll get this dialog box asking do I want to save the changes and I'm going to say don't save because this is our original. I want it to remain the same as it was when we first opened it. And now if I say open and navigate to that place where we save our final photo, you can see here's our original right here. And here's the one that we saved. So I'll open that. And you can see it has the white background with the crop that we chose and it just has one layer. Well, that wraps up this tutorial on how to crop photos into shapes with Photoshop Elements. So, until next time, this is Rick saying take care.